Welcome in. It is a Tuesday here on True Crime Tuesday. I'm Tim Dennis. Uh, You know, we normally have the guest come in at this point on True Crime Tuesday. We had a little bit of a kerfuffle, so I'm bringing in our buddy Beer City Bruiser here. Hey, Bruiser, how you doing? I'm pretty good. I love that you use the word kerfuffle. That's one of my yeah. favorite little kerfuffle and flabbergast are two of my favorite words in the English language. <laughs> well, here, let me explain to you what's going on. So I uh, I got up bright and early this morning, uh, probably before the uh, the birds were making those little noises that either sound like F you or ha ha, one or the other <laughs> yep. uh, that the birds in my yard make. Um, and so I got up to get ready for an interview very, very early this morning with some guests that will be on with us next week. Uh, reason I say this next week was because we had an agreement uh, with uh, with a certain publisher that this book is on that, that we were going to do the uh, the um, interview for, for today. We were going to tape ah. yesterday for today. And uh, at the last minute, the publisher said, oh, no, 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 we're going to embargo the interview for next week, for May 3rd. And I went, are you kidding me? So, Good old PR. <laughs> yeah, so the boys were all for it because the story takes place like 12 years ago. So okay. it, it doesn't make much sense to embargo the story. The story is an, an older story. Yeah, it's and, already written. Yeah, and our guests for next week, they were all they were all for it. They were like, "Yeah, let's get the story out there. Let's get it uh let's get it to your audience and get them excited, get them uh ordering copies of the book early." You yeah. know, pre-sales. Uh Matthew Campbell and Kit Shalel are the guests for next week and the name of the book is Dead in the Water. And I was all excited because I had read this book and it, it's a very good book. It has to do with uh uh, hijacking a, a murder and global maritime conspiracy having to do with Lloyd's of London and oh. an oil tanker and uh, Somali pirates. Oh, of course. well, you got to throw in Somali pirates if you have in on foreign waters with hijacking and all that. And like, it is. It's off the coast of Yemen. And there's <laughs> there's I mean, there's some high intrigue in this in this book. And. Man, there's some good stuff in there, Bruiser, and and we we sat down for about an hour and twenty minutes, and and it was just a really good, meaty, juicy interview. And then I heard from the rep, and she said, "Nope, not till next week." So, <laughs> well, so it's in the can, right? So it's in the as can. They say, as they say in radio, it's in the can. It's in the can. It's ready to go. So you'll get to hear that next week here on True Crime Tuesday. In the meantime. It's time now for Ripped from the Headlines. Oh, all right. I'm excited. I I hope the fans are okay with me being a guest for this. I I enjoy coming on here and talking to our lovely fans on both the true crime stuff and the parish air. That's right. Very excited. We're going to do a a little Ripped from the Headlines. It's going to be headlines you've heard throughout the week. Uh, of course, we've got uh, the overseas stuff going on right now. So some of the headlines get buried. There's a new headline, though, Bruiser, that's popped up in lieu of some of the stuff that's happened over in the Ukraine. I mean, the Ukraine is still taking up a lot of our headlines, as it should. Um, but there's one headline in particular. Some people may be a little tired of it already uh, because it does take place in Hollyweird. Other people are saying, man, I can't get enough. I don't know about your household <laughs> or not, Bruiser, but... There's uh, two actors that are fighting it out in court right now uh, in a uh, headline that probably should have been buried four years ago. Uh, but I think you know the one I'm talking about, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a, a common discussion in the uh, Bruiser household. Yeah. Just because of the stuff that's coming up. Like, the stuff that they are covering in this trial is that happened <laughs> like wait what <laughs> when you get two people in a civil uh, disagreement and in a civil court and they try to sue each other over lost wages and uh, other things everything has to come out in court uh so johnny depp is suing amber heard for 50 million dollars that's a lot of snapple yeah it is isn't it <laughs> um so here's what went on this past week uh at the trial Let's burn Amber and more of Johnny Depp's texts were read at trial this week. Oh, God. We've got some audio from the trial that we'll play here as well. Uh, Amber Heard's attorneys tried to undermine the actor using his own words. Actually, there's memes out there that you can you can find uh, if you're on your social media and you're, you're scrolling about. You've probably seen some of the memes that are quite clever between Johnny and Amber Heard's 
um, lawyer, as he's reading things back to Johnny over and over and over again, uh, Johnny says to Amber's lawyer that uh, he believes he knows the meaning of the word hearsay and uh, has, uh, is stopping in the middle of his testimony and he goes, let me guess, hearsay? And uh, <laughs> he stops the lawyer before he can object due to hearsay. That's one of the memes out there that's kind of funny. But attorneys for actor Amber Heard sought to undermine Johnny Depp's libel lawsuit against her this past week by spending hours in court focused on the actor's drinking, drug use, and texts that he sent his friends, including one about wanting to kill and defile his then-wife. Uh, Heard's lawyers referenced Depp's history of trashing hotel rooms and his smashing of a bathroom sconce during an argument with Heard. Depp's lawsuit against Heard alleges that she falsely portrayed him as a domestic abuser and ruined his lucrative acting career. But Heard's attorneys argue that Depp did indeed abuse Heard, both physically and sexually, and 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 claims he can't deny it Uh, Because he was, I think that's written a little awkwardly, uh, because he was often drunk and high to the point of blacking out, Depp's text messages uh, only bolster his wife's or his ex-wife's defense, uh, her lawyer said. Here are the details on that. And these are the actual text. Uh, Not paraphrasing, but the actual text. I, of course... Pounded and displayed ugly colors to Amber on a recent journey, Depp said in a text message to a friend, uh, the actor Paul Bettany, in July of 2013, which was shown to jurors. It went on to say, I am an insane person and not so fair-headed after too much of the drink, Depp continued. (laughs) You've heard his uh, allowance on how much he would spend on just wine a week, correct? Have you heard this number? I've heard it, but I don't remember it. Like ten thousand dollars a week on yeah, just wine. On just wine, yeah. But it's it's the good <laughs> stuff, I thought, right? Isn't it? I'm assuming it's got. I mean, you always buy ten thousand dollars of boxed wine. I know that's the <laughs> high class wine, but <laughs> ten thousand dollars of boxed wine, and it's on sale. Uh, Herd's lawyer, J. Benjamin Rottenborn. I can't believe he kept that last name. Uh, focused, Especially being a lawyer. Yeah, right. Uh, focused on another exchange le- that year between Depp and Bettany, in which Depp wrote, let's burn Amber. Bettany responded, having thought it through, I don't think we should burn Amber. <laughs> Depp texted, <laughs> let's drown her before we burn her. I will bleeping her. I will bleep her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she's dead. Oh. Hmm. Well, that leaves nothing to the imagination, now, does it? <laughs> no, no, not, no, not really. Uh, Rottenborn also showed the jury one of Depp's texts to Bre- uh, Bettany in 2014, in which he referenced whiskey, pills, and cocaine. The texts were written during a period in which Depp said he had stopped drinking, and they were sent around the time of a private flight from Boston to uh, Los Angeles, during which Heard said Depp assaulted her while he was blackout drunk. Rottenborn presented texts that Depp sent to Bettany that he said he drank all night before I picked up Amber to up to fly to L.A. this past Sunday. Ugly, mate, he went on to say, no food for days, powders, half a bottle of whiskey, a thousand Red Bull and vodkas, pills, two bottles of Champers on plane. Okay, I don't think that's true because who can drink a thousand but things with Red Bull. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Your heart would explode. Yeah, I would think you your heart would be pounding through your chest. That's for sure. And you're doing cocaine on top of that? Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he, there's no way. He's just, I think he's just flaunting to his friend. I do love how everything's going to Paul Bettany, who's a fantastic actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just think, oh, yeah, those two are friends, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if, if, if uh, Johnny Depp was trying to – Roll him for a role over at Marvel. He he was in line for a role at Marvel before the whole thing came about. The whole thing cost him a Marvel role. That's crazy. So so yeah, he was up, and it also cost him. He had um uh, a character in the Harry Potter spinoff, the uh, Imaginary Beast. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, so oh yeah, everyone makes not, everyone makes fun of me. I I can't stand Harry Potter. But anyways, I'm not a big Harry Potter guy either. I mean, I've seen them, I. but yeah, it's, I've seen it. It's but Star it's Wars not, for yeah. kids. It and, is. Uh, yeah. They say that he his character was taken out of this latest movie because of the whole thing with Amber. So I believe it. I believe. Yeah. It. 
Uh, Depp had previously testified that he took two oxycodone pills, an opiate to which he admits he was addicted at the time, and locked himself in the plane bathroom and fell asleep to avoid her badgering. He also disputes that he was drunk on the flight, saying he only drank a glass of champagne as he boarded the plane. But Rat- Rottenborn also showed the jury Depp's expressions of contrition following the flight. Once again, I find myself in a place of shame and regret, Depp wrote to Heard. Of course, I am sorry. I really don't know why or what happened, but I will never do it again. My illness somehow crept up and grabbed me. I must get better, and I will for us both. Starting today, I love you. Again, I am so sorry. So sorry. He's quite dramatic, even in... In, uh, he just seems like life. a dramatic. He's an he's an artist, Tim. He's an artist. Well, now th- well, I'm going to read a story <laughs> here in a little bit from Howard. Uh, something Howard Stern said this morning, which makes complete sense, and okay. it, it, it ties it together quite nicely. Um, the jury uh, also saw a written apology from Depp to Heard's father, in which the actor said he messed up and went too far in a fight with Heard. But Depp noted on the stand that the message did not say the fight was a physical one. Uh, Multiple audio recordings of the couple's conversations were played in court. In one, Heard told Depp that he vomited in his sleep. In another discussion, it sounds as if Depp uh, said he headbutted Heard. Uh, He says, quote, I was using the words that Miss Heard was using, Depp countered, but there was not an intentional headbutt. And if you want to have a peaceful conversation with Miss Heard, you might have to placate just a bit. Uh, Depp has previously apologized to the jury for the vulgar language in the texts and has said that in the heat of the pain I was feeling, I went to dark places. He made the same apology uh, last week, last Thursday. Uh, Rottenborn's cross-examination of Depp lasted all of Thursday and it was scheduled to continue today, which it did. As a matter of fact, I have uh, I have some of that uh, testimony here. Now we're going to play some of the stuff that went on today, uh, mainly because it's uh, a little bit alarming, Bruce. Um, the stuff that came up today was uh, was some stuff that uh, was a little bit shocking. I'll just put it that way. Uh, the stuff that came up today was, uh, to say the least, uh, had to do with a cigarette. Oh. Yeah, and exactly what uh, Johnny did with that cigarette Um it's not what Mr. Clinton did with the cigar, is it? No, 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 no. <laughs> Let's just say that it was a little uh, a little bit uh, alarming. Okay. Um, let me bring up my audio here, and, and you can hear uh, what it says here. It says, I'm going to die. You're causing me so much stress. Those were the words of Amber during yet another one of their heated arguments with Johnny. Her legal team played an audio recording of the face-off in court while Depp was on the stand. She was begging him to stop fighting with her and instead have a normal argument. He agreed they needed some time apart and asked a driver to take her back to their home in downtown Los Angeles. Johnny said she didn't seem to be in any shape to drive. Uh, On the recording, Depp also says, this isn't love, this is not happiness. Uh, In what is just another on the uh, toxic relationship that was Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, new audio accuses Johnny of using Amber as his personal ashtray. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, you don't want to do that. No. Uh, The audio was played today in court, day four of Depp's testimony. Day four, that's how much stuff there is between the two of them that he needed day four to get the stuff out. Uh, well, when well, you get two toxic people and you throw in drugs and alcohol yeah, and you throw in accusations of, of domestic abuse but on both ends, it wasn't like one, just one was the aggressor. They both were right. You're going to have a long trial and all the skeletons will come out of the closet. Right. Um, let's, uh, we'll play the audio here in a second. There's no visual evidence in this instance. Amber Heard's lawyer pointed out the fact that Johnny doesn't deny burning her with the cigarette Let's play the audio right now, and uh, you'll get an idea of exactly what we're talking about here. Mr. Depp, we've talked about this uh, a little bit, but you've testified that abuse can come in many forms, correct? Physical being one of them, right? Uh, Yes, indeed. Emotional? Indeed. Verbal? Indeed. Psychological abuse? Indeed. Some of those sort of flow into the other. I'd like to talk... Understood. I'd like to talk about um, some of that abuse. Um, Can we pull up Exhibit 582, please? (laughs) 
Your Honor, this is a recording, Defendant's Exhibit 582, that we will play um, the entirety of. All right. Any objection to 582? No objection, Your Honor. All right. 582 in evidence. Go put your fucking cigarettes out on someone else. You fucking have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. Yeah. You got me there. Can you play that one more time, please, Michelle? Objection, Your Honor. I'll sustain the objection. Move on. Mr. Depp, when, when Ms. Hurd tells you in that recording to go put your cigarettes out on someone else, you don't deny that, but instead you simply say, shut up, fat ass. Is that correct? Um, I think that was another grossly exaggerated moment of Ms. Hurd, so I, don't, I did not put a cigarette out on her or throw a cigarette at her. A grossly, and by the way, that's from TMZ, a grossly exaggerated moment by Miss Heard. Don't put your cigarette out on me is a grossly exaggerated moment, uh, Bruiser. I, his comeback, he's calling her a fat ass? Like, come on. <laughs> like, I think we've all seen Amber Heard. There, there ain't a whole lot of fat on her. No, and that's like the worst comeback you could have in an argument, you know? Yeah. That's like the, I know you are, but what am I? You yeah. know, like, and, he doesn't deny it at all. Yeah. That he put the cigarette out on her. And either the recording or, or well, he did, you know, when they, they asked him about it, he said it was grossly, grossly exaggerated. Yes. Like, yeah. What, he flick his cigarette near her? I mean, how do you grossly exaggerate getting burned by a cigarette? Exactly, exactly. So there is some truth to it. He's not denying that the act happened. It was just grossly exaggerated. Um, do they, did, I haven't seen anything yet, but neither one of them ever went to the doctor for evidence, did they, that has come up yet? I know, I think he did for his chopped off finger. The but, doc, his doctor testified last yeah. week um, that there was blood and that the tip of his finger was taken off. Um but if you're in a domestic abuse situation, get as much footage as you can. Take pictures of everything because mm -hmm. that goes a long way, you know, because here it's just one person's word against the other. And by the way, we do apologize for the language in the clip. It's it's uh, it's just it's it's exactly what was played in court. So that's why we present it as it is. It's it's evidence in a, in a court trial. There is some some uh, more stern language or more bad language in this next clip uh here's this clip is it's the latest claim or la latest damning claim it says here to come from the ongoing trial amber's lawyer played another audio clip where amber says after you beat the blank out of me then a week later you show up at my doorstep as you know depp is suing his ex-wife for 50 million dollars claiming she lied when she accused him of physically abusing her amber's counter suing for 100 million for defamation claiming he coordinated a smear campaign against her uh here's that clip right now well i fucked up and cried in my bedroom after i had dumped you a fucking week week prior a fucking week prior after you beat the shit out of me and then a week later you show in my show up at my doorstep in my room saying you want to say goodbye okay say goodbye oh i said it yes you did say it i'll go to the text messages so that we are clear yes, on the tape you said it before oh. to me okay no doubt i mean you did not say you're to come over to say bye i mean a huge mistake you didn't you didn't say that to me you didn't say that to me? Well, I won't do it again. What's the mistake then? Didn't, did you or did you not say you were coming over to say bye? Again, that from TMZ.com. Uh, How did these audio clips get recorded? There, uh, there is a actually a closed circuit feed that Johnny Depp paid for himself, which is, we'll get to this in a moment. Um, okay. It's kind of interesting because this wasn't paid for by the court. Johnny decided to establish this feed himself to show the world what exactly went on with this case, what exactly went on between him and Amber Heard, believing if all this was brought to the light of day, he would be vindicated. So I wonder, does she know about the recording, that it's recording? 
or did he oh, not yeah, tell she, her? Because it sounds she, like she tried to uh, go to the judge and have the uh, have the feed rescinded, or have okay. it, you know, basically have the feed shut down because she believed her her rights were being violated. the The judge basically upheld it and said he didn't feel that that there was any reason to. Yeah, um, you're not as long feed. as you know are are known that you're coming on a property that's recording. Yeah. Um, you, it's legal. Like, yeah, it, and, that's why there's all those signs when you walk into some place. And it's a, you know, the judge cited it's a public court hearing. So in the in the records are a matter of public record. So it, right. there's no reason why he couldn't. Because it sounds like she's question. trying to get him to admit to something, but he knows he's being recorded. So he's not admitting to what he's doing, but he's not denying what he. You know what I mean? Like. Mm-hmm. That's what I get from these recordings is her trying to have him come forward and admit he had done wrong and him not admitting he had done wrong. That's true. Uh, last week, uh, Johnny Depp kicked off his testimony by saying he never hit Amber despite uh, her claims and that he was there in court seeking the truth no matter what. Uh, it's been a complete showdown in court with both making explosive accusations against the other. Here's another clip of uh, Johnny Depp explaining uh, exactly what he meant by he never hit Amber, despite her claims. About six years ago, um, uh, Ms. Heard made uh, some quite heinous and... Um, uh, disturbing uh, brought these disturbing criminal um, acts um, against uh, me that uh, that were not based in any species of truth. Um, it was a, it was a complete shock uh, that it would. It, it just didn't need to go in that direction um, as nothing nothing of the kind had ever happened though it, it, the relationship um, there were um, arguments and um, things of that nature, but never did I myself r- reach the point of um, uh, striking Miss Heard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman um, in my life. And so I, at the time, because the news of this her accusations had uh, sort of permeated the industry and then made its way through media and social media became quite a global um, uh, let's say quote unquote fact if you will and since I knew that there was no truth to it whatsoever, I felt it my responsibility to uh, to stand up not only for myself um, in that instance, but stand up for my children, who at the time were uh, f- fourteen and sixteen, and so they were in high school and. Uh, I I thought it was diabolical that my children would have to go to um, school and have their friends or people in the school approach them with the infamous People magazine cover with uh, uh, Miss Heard with a, a dark bruise on her face. Um, and then it just kept um, the 
it, it kept multiplying. It, it, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. So it was my responsibility, I felt, to not only attempt to clear my name um, for the sake of, well, for many reasons, but I wanted to clear uh, my children of, of this horrid thing that they were having to read about their father, that was, which was untrue. Okay, so, and that again, that clip coming from TMZ.com. So, that's, that's kind of a shady clip, and I'll tell you why, and I'll, I'll get to this next article in a second, which may clear some things up for you. Um, he stutters through a lot of that. He stops. He looks for explanation. He's, he's grasping for a good answer as to why he's pursuing this case. Four years, I might add, after... It happens four years after this incident has passed and four years after really, wouldn't you say, Bruiser, we've forgotten all about it? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and it, he sounds like it, it wasn't rehearsed, obviously, but he does sound like he's giving a a, a monologue, if you will, like if you go to a play. And you have that, that, for instance, Death of a Salesman. Mm -hmm. And you have that main character come out and he does that whole monologue. That's almost what it sounds like he's doing there. Like, this is his time. Everyone's listening to him. You know, and and he he tries to come across without making himself – he's trying to come across as the good guy without perjuring himself, if that makes sense. I Mm -hmm. think that's why he's so – there's the long pauses. Because you got to think carefully of your words. Because when you're on the when you're on the stand, it, you have to tell the truth. You know, you will get perjure. You know, and mm-hmm. if you notice, like, it, I think it's kind of cheesy. He's throwing his kids in there, like, oh, I'm doing this for my kids. No, you're not. You're doing this to prove you did or didn't do yeah. what she said you did or didn't do. I under we uh, people forget our kids live through our mistakes. Yeah, for, you know, and- especially when you're a public figure. You know, and they and roll, yeah, they're going to read about it, but they roll with the punches better than you do. Exactly. Yeah, and, and they they kids see more than we give them credit. And he's saying his kids are fourteen and sixteen. If there was this type of behavior, trust me, they didn't learn from it from People Magazine. <laughs> you know, they yeah. learned from it from seeing it firsthand. Right. You know, so I, I I'm not on either side in this case. I want you know. It's sad that domestic abuse happened. It's sad that domestic abuse happens in everyday occurrences. I wish it didn't, you know, but it just proves to you that if you are in a situation where stuff like this is happening to you, record as much as you can, get out of the toxic environment and get help right? before right. it comes to this. Famous or not, you know? Yep. Well, people are picking sides left and right, Bruiser, and and some are coming out publicly. Some are talking amongst themselves and their families and their friends and and picking sides. I don't pick a side either way on on either side in this deal. Um, I don't really, I don't want to say I don't care about this case. It's not that I don't care about it. I have other things that take up my day. Uh, But there's one famous person in the media who has taken a side and he was rather vocal this morning on a Sirius XM show and that being Howard Stern. Howard well, of course Stern, he has an opinion. <laughs> oh yes, and it was very strong. Howard came right out and just said Johnny Depp is overacting and, okay. uh, and cited the fact that he brought his movie accent to the trial. I was going to say something about that too. Does he have an accent in that? Because he, he's a California kid, isn't he? Like, isn't that where he's from is well, California or is, let or is me, he a Midwest guy? Or? Let me cite what Howard said on the air here. He called Johnny Depp out for overacting while Depp testified against Amber Heard during the former couple's defamation trial, which has been live streamed on various platforms since April 11th. Depp is suing Heard, of course, for defamation, which I told you about earlier after she alluded to their alleged uh, abusive relationship in an op-ed piece written for the Washington Post. Heard's legal team reportedly tried to block cameras from live streaming the trial, which was approved by Judge Penny, I believe it's as as correct, as correct. Yes. Uh, Depp's team did not publicly challenge the decision. 
The reason he wanted that on, he wanted it televised, and this is Howard Stern saying this, because that's what narcissists do. Stern just basically came out and called it what it was. Stern said of Depp while discussing the trial on his Sirius XM radio show, they think they can talk their way out of anything. I think Johnny Depp is a huge narcissist. And what I mean by that is he figured I'll put this on TV and because I'm so persuasive and because I'm so smart, I'm such a wonderful guy. I'll play you some clips from the Johnny Depp trial. If he isn't acting, I mean, he's so overacting. This is Howard saying this again, because he's writing his own material as he goes along, Stern continued. You know, I got to tell you, he's wrong. He shouldn't be putting this on TV in any shape. Stern agreed with his co-host Robin Quivers that the trial will not save Depp's career. That's what narcissists do, they say. I will charm the pants off of America at the trial. No, you won't. This will not go well, Stern said. It's not going well for you. It's not going well for her. It's not going well for anybody. You two, you're, you sound like two battling children. It's just coming off really badly, Stern added. Johnny Depp testified in court for two days last week. Two days. Think about that. Lots of room to embarrass yourself. Two full effing days. First of all, his difficulty in speaking the English language is fantastic. And the accent. First of all, isn't he like from the south of the Midwest? Johnny <laughs> Depp was born in Kentucky. Does that sound okay, like a guy Kentucky. from Kentucky? Uh, Depp's cross-examination concluded... Uh, as we record this on Monday, uh, the 25th, Heard has not yet testified, but will do so in the coming days. Now, there are a lot of you out there that probably disagree with Howard Stern with a passion and don't want to hear one word coming out of his mouth. There are others out there who agree with uh, everything Stern says, or those of you who could care less what Stern says one way or another. But Stern has a good point here. I think he has an amazing point. I thought that was totally 100% his his Jack Sparrow accent, like, and he, and he is, I think all actors are narcissists. I'm sorry. I, I think they all are. It's just some can hide it better than others. Um, there, there's definitely uh, a lot of ego there. If you're an actor, you have to have I a massive be, ego. In, I think to be, and, and from this coming from a quasi celebrity, I guess you can call myself, but someone that ha does perform in front of the public, you have to have a little bit of an ego to do something like that because you're presenting yourself on a larger stage, whether it be a wrestling ring, a TV show, a movie, whatever. So you have to do that. It's the narcissists get absorbed by that. They they grow by that. Where the the non narcissist can okay, yeah, I did that, and then kind of venture off and do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I don't think either one of these two, excuse me, is gonna their career is gonna be saved after this. Look at, for instance, look what happened with Mel Gibson after he came out lamenting, um the Jewish faith and everything like he's down to doing just VOD or, or, you know, direct to DVD stuff because that, that killed his career. And I think that's going to happen to these two, but someone like Johnny Depp, who everything's got to be in the public eye. I can see that's why he did the, this whole thing and yeah, put it on TV. You know, I'm pretty sure Amber Heard wanted it on TV, too, but her lawyers are like, no, let's not do that, because now you don't just have the judge and jury, you have public opinion, and the court of public opinion is very powerful. Yeah, yeah, that it is. It's it's difficult to to say who wins and who loses in this. I think everybody loses, like Howard says. Everybody loses. I, I think Amber Heard loses. I think Johnny Depp loses. The minute you put something this long in front of a camera, you can't have a flawless performance. Sooner or later, you, know you who slip. Wins, Tim? Who's that? You know who wins? The lawyers. That's true. That's so, true. You know, we got the Kardashians because of the O.J. Simpson trial. Mm -hmm. You know, they the, Johnny Cochran became huge after the OJ. Even Marsha Clark yeah. wrote a bunch of books. And, you know, that's who's winning out of this is the lawyers. Yeah, very much so. And you're right about that. The The lawyers end up winning at the end of this. Although, like I mentioned before, those there are those memes out there that of Johnny <laughs> Depp making the Amber Heard's lawyer look kind of foolish. Um, I do think in the end, the lawyers do win in this. I think you're absolutely right about that. I did see one interesting comment here, Bruiser, uh, as I was doing the research for the story. And that is, there's one guy who made a comment and he did have an, an interesting point, And that is, 
you know, with all these people talking about Johnny Depp and, and Amber Heard, you know, there was some movement on the Julian Assange uh, case this week. Nobody's talking about that. No. So that's that's typical society. Look over here at this shiny object because this is what's happening over here and we don't want you to pay attention to it. So I thought, hey, you know what? It's ripped from the headlines. We should talk about it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Uh, we'll be the we'll be the program to talk about it. Essentially, this is what happened this last week with Julian Assange. There was an extradition order that was issued by a London court moving the WikiLeaks founder to the U.S. After all really? this time, yeah, he was uh, it, that, 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 and that's huge news because he thought he was going to get away because they couldn't extradite him. Not only that, but shortly before that extradition order was signed by a judge. Russia and China came out, surprise, surprise, and talked about how horrible it would be if Julian Assange was extradited to the U.S. <laughs> and neither of those stories, I saw neither of those stories on the news. Yeah, yeah I mean, because it's not the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. No. Uh, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, it says here, has moved one step closer. He is that step closer to being extradited to the U.S. It was signed by a judge this week, uh, where he is set to be tried under the Espionage Act after a London court uh, sent his handover order to the British government for approval. Uh, the court issued a formal extradition order in a hearing this last Wednesday, leaving UK Home Secretary uh, Priti Patel to rubber stamp his transfer to the US after a years long legal wrangle. Assange is able to appeal the decision, however. Uh, he is wanted in the U.S. on 18 criminal charges after WikiLeaks published thousands of classified files and diplomatic cables in 2010. That's 12 years old already, that That's case. crazy. Uh, I'd actually forgotten about that case till just now when you had brought it up. Yeah. Because I figured, oh, he's never going to be extradited back to the U.S. Uh, well, there it is, my friend. Uh, if convicted, Assange faces up to 175 years in prison. Assange joined the hearing virtually from the high-security Belmarsh Prison in London, where he was uh, being held since being dragged out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London three years ago. He stated his full name and date of birth. His extradition has been the subject of numerous court dates since his arrest, which took place after Assange sought diplomatic refuge in the embassy for seven years. In January of 2021, a magistrate's court ruling found that Assange could not be extradited as it would be oppressive by reason of his mental health. But the high court overturned that decision in December, saying Assange uh, could be extradited on the basis of assurances given by the U.S. government about his treatment there. These included pledges that Assange would not be made the subject of special administrative measures, nor would he be held at a maximum security prison uh, before or after trial. Assange last month married long-term partner Stella Morris inside Belmarsh Prison. So what do you think about that? Well, I know why he got married, because now we can put all of his assets under her name. So when he does go to prison, she's they're still able to keep all their assets. Yeah, very true. Very true. But I, I, I think he's – it's just a matter of time. You can only run from the law for so long. And, and, you know, the law will catch up to you, and he'll have his day in court. Yeah. And I think he's going to serve jail time. I think so, too. I think so. And like too. I said, I think him marrying his long-term partner is simple for the fact of hiding assets and, and keeping everything in line. Very true. A story we were talking about last week, uh, Bruiser, we're going to head to break. But when, when we come back, uh, a story that dominated the headlines last week might have been a little misleading. You know, everybody thinks Mike Tyson slipped back into his old ways and his old habits. But it turns out the guy that he punched out on an airline was a habitual felony offender. <laughs> of we'll talk, course he was. We'll talk about that story and how he crossed the line with Mike Tyson when we come back. And also, I don't know if you saw this headline or not, Bruiser, but there was a gruesome murder in, uh, I believe it was on Long Island in New York, where a guy murdered his lover and a housewife put her in a duffel bag and dragged her down a block. It was caught by CCTV. He stabbed her 55 times. That's a lot of rage. Then, That's a lot of rage. Then dragged her down a block and left her on the block, then called her husband 
and said the entire family was next. I have heard this. Yeah. I have heard. I'm excited to discuss this. Well, there's a twist to that story. Oh, I can't wait. And this is disturbing because it has to do with YouTube and where this guy has been on YouTube and on social media. The guy that killed the woman. Okay. The guy that killed the woman. So there's more twists to this killer. We'll talk about that when we come back. We're talking about ripped from the headlines this past week right here on True Crime Tuesday with our buddy, Beer City Bruiser. When we come back, more ripped from the headlines right here on The Best in True Crime Talk Radio. This is True Crime Tuesday. Welcome back to The Best in True Crime Podcasting. This is True Crime Tuesday. We are talking ripped from the headlines It's all the things you might have missed throughout the week last week because, let's face it, we were focused on other things that were going on in the world. Of course, we got lots of things going on in Ukraine. We've got other things going on in the world. We're talking about whether or not we need to protect ourselves against another wave of a pandemic. And the media has us focused on other things. I hate that they still cover that pandemic stuff like... Let's let's move on. There's other things in the world. Not saying don't cover it. You know, obviously cover it, but don't make it number one priority. Well, I know what number one priority is for the guy who uh, ran into Mike Tyson on an airliner. <laughs> that is getting <laughs> his hands up. Have you seen this up. video? Oh Have you yeah, seen the video? I, I've watched it quite a few times. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going on record now. Before, if anybody doesn't know the story, I'm 100 percent with Mike Tyson on this. Like. 100 percent behind mike tyson on this there's such a thing as personal space folks yes uh, when you when you meet anybody in public or when you see anybody in public doesn't matter if they're a celebrity or not just personal space and personal and, boundaries and there's a time and a place to approach said celebrity and there's a way of approaching said celebrity <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you know, some people are are friendly people. Some people are open people. Some people like to talk to other people and be open with people. And other people just want to be by themselves. Yep. And they're they're more introverted. And you should probably let them be their introverted selves and just leave them alone. And do not ask for an autograph at the urinal. That is the worst place you can ask for an autograph. That's true. You don't want to do that either. Uh, the airline passenger that Mike Tyson allegedly says allegedly punched. I think on the video he got a few in. Yeah, yeah, he 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 hit him. <laughs> he yeah, hit him good. He hit him real good. Uh, allegedly punched last week was in 2019 listed as having habitual felony offender status. Here's a shock: Melvin Townsend the third is from Florida. Of course he is. Oh. Why wouldn't he be from Florida? Yeah. He's 36 years old and has a long criminal history, including a grand theft conviction uh, from which he received 25 months behind bars in 2019 when he was listed as a habitual ho- offender. Uh, other convictions include fraud by identity theft, trafficking stolen property, use or possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. Well, that makes sense why you went after Mike Tyson then, because it's common knowledge in the yard. You go after the biggest dog in the yard, you make that <laughs> statement. So on this flight, this guy looked around this jet blue flight and went, oh, Mike Tyson, well, he's definitely the biggest dog in this yard. <laughs> I'm going to go up and, and punch went him. right after him. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Mike got the best of him right away. A uh, video of the jet blue flight, as Bruiser said, from San Francisco to Miami, uh, showed Townsend allegedly allegedly bothering him. I think he got full full bother status in on oh, yeah. um, on Mike Tyson until the former boxing champion punched him repeatedly about the head and shoulders. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Tyson had an incident on a flight with an aggressive passenger who began harassing him and threw a water bottle at him while he was in his seat. Tyson's rep says. Authorities briefly detained and then released two people after the incident, one of whom was treated for non-life-threatening injuries and who then refused to cooperate with the police investigation, which is still underway. That, according to the BBC, Townsend declined to press charges but has hired a lawyer, suggesting a lawsuit might be coming. Our client denies throwing a water bottle prior to being struck by Mr. Tyson, the attorney tells uh, TMZ. Uh, Mr. Tyson clearly became agitated by an overly excited fan and began to strike him in an excessive manner. (laughs) I somehow don't think that's how it went, but, you know. No. Yeah, we'll we'll settle on that. We'll just call it that. 
Uh, you know, the Russian spy who inspired the Americans is dead. Did you ever watch that on FX? I did not. I've heard it's a great show, mm-hmm. and I, I love good spy stuff. You know, especially when you, you talk about that, where they send operatives over here to live as as Americans, essentially. And they yeah. used to have towns of yep. just Russian spies and stuff like that. All intrigues me. Um, wasn't in the movie Spies Like Us, they do something like that in there with Chevy Chase and Dan yeah. Aykroyd. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. I, I have not tuned into it, but I know it's on one of the streaming services, and it's actually on one of my lists. I say, I've, I've got so much more to catch up on. Yeah. Uh, Mikhail Vazenkov uh, reportedly died on April tw- – I'm sorry, on April 6th, 26th. Is tomorrow it's going to be freezing. Actually, it's today, <laughs> and it's going to be freezing here in Minnesota. Um, at age 79, the most senior of 10 Russian spies unmasked in the U.S., in 2010 in a case that inspired the TV show, The Americans, and he has passed away. Uh, Mikhail Vazenkov, uh, who worked for years in secrecy in Yonkers, New York, died April 6th at the age of 79, according to an announcement from Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service. It credited the former sleeper agent with creating and heading an illegal residency, which obtained valuable political information, which was highly appreciated per the Moscow Times. However, Vazenkov and his wife, uh, Vicky Palais, uh, highly I'm sorry, uh, Vicky Palais neither collected nor delivered any secrets to Moscow. Uh, Vazenkov was the most senior of the spy group, which also included Anna Chapman, Andrei Ber- Bezrukov, and Elena, <laughs> Russian names trip me up quite a bit, uh, Elena <laughs> Vavilo, Vavilova, Vavilova, there we go. And at one time, he taught political science at Baruch College, um, trained in the Foreign Operations Division of the Soviet KGB. He flew to Peru on a Uruguayan passport with the name Juan Jose Lazaro Fuentes, one of the names that won't get me in this article, <laughs> uh, in 1976 and gained Peruvian citizenship three years later. He reportedly married Uruguay native journalist uh, Pelez with the blessing of his handlers in 1983, two years before they moved to the U.S., Uh, He was caught instructing her on how to pass communications to agents in Peru and also complaining that his handlers say my information is of no value. Uh, Though Palais insisted she didn't know her husband was a spy until his arrest, she pleaded guilty to failing to register as an agent of a foreign government alongside him. They were then released to Moscow as part of a prisoner swap and soon after return to Peru. The couple's son, who was 17 at the time of their arrest, remained in New York, where he still lives, per the Times. Uh, Pelé's stepson from a previous relationship, who was 38 at the time of their arrest, also remained in the U.S. and now lives with his mother in Peru. That, according to their lawyer, it's unclear where Vesenkov died. Uh, The Times notes that he was in Moscow at the time of a December 2020 interview, a cause of death was not provided. So there you go. How'd you like to be their son? And I mean, no one's going to trust you. <laughs> yeah. You know, like your dad was this famous spy and they did this show about him and you know, like no one's going to trust that kid. No, I wouldn't think they would tr- trust him at all. You know, um, I give spies like, like deep undercover spies or even deep undercover agents um, of any law enforcement or, or whatever credit because you have to create a whole new persona mm-hmm. opposite of what you've known literally your whole life and you have to not only believe it yourself and make other people believe it and remember the entire backstory that's that's it, the thing yeah yeah and you yeah. can't make a mistake no and then when you report to your handlers you've got to revert back to that original persona and yeah. there's, there's no day off days off especially if you get married there's no days off yeah yeah it yeah it's pretty incredible Uh, Another headline you might have missed in the uh, ripped from the headline section here. A Texas woman has been granted a stay of execution. Uh, Melissa Lucio is on death row, but she is seeking a new trial in her daughter's death. A Texas appeals court uh, this past Monday delayed the execution of a woman amid growing doubts about whether she fatally beat her two-year-old daughter in a case that has garnered the support of lawmakers, celebrities, and even some of the jurors who sentenced her to death. Uh, The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals granted a request by Melissa Lucio's lawyer 
uh, for a stay of execution so lower courts can review her claims that new evidence in her case would exonerate her. It was not immediately known when the lower court would begin gr- uh, reviewing her case. Lucio had been set for lethal injection on Wednesday for the 2007 death of her daughter, Mariah, in Harling- Harlingen, a uh, city of about 75,000 in Texas's southern tip. Uh, the execution stay was announced minutes before the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles had been set to consider her clemency application to either commute her death sentence or grant her a 120-day reprieve. Lucio remains, or maintains rather, that her daughter was injured in a fall down a flight of stairs. Well, Interesting. I wonder what evidence has come to light to get the appeal. Not sure, but I'm sure we're about to uh, we're about to find out. That's for sure. Uh, no survivors are found after a tour boat in uh, sinks in Japan. I don't, I'm not sure if you heard about this story or not. Ten were pulled from the water, or ten that were pulled from the water have died, and sixteen others are missing. Uh, in this story. The news is grim on the search for survivors after a Japanese tour boat sank. Ten people who were retrieved Sunday from the frigid sea and the rocky coast of a northern Japanese national park had died per the AP. Uh, The search for the other 16 people missing continues, as does the investigation into what happened. Originally, a tour boat with 26 people aboard was missing in rough and cold waters off North Japan on Saturday after it issued a distress call and reported it was sinking. No survivors have been found after more than seven hours of an intense search. This was on Saturday, as it was originally reported. Uh, The 19-ton Kazoo 1 made an emergency call in the early afternoon saying the ship's bow was flooded and was beginning to sink and tilt while it was traveling off the western coast of Shiretoko Peninsula near the northern island of Hokkaido, uh, uh, the, that according to the Coast Guard. Uh, the tour boat has since lost contact, according to the Coast Guard. It said the boat was carrying 24 passengers, including two children and two crew. Yikes. Hopefully they made it someplace. It says that average April sea temperatures in Shire Toko National Park are just above freezing. An official of the vessel's operator, Shire Toko Pleasure Cruise, said he could not comment as he had to respond to calls from worried families of the passenger passengers. Rather, uh, Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, uh, who was attending a two-day water summit in Kumamoto in southern Japan, was canceling his program to Sunday and was set to return to Tokyo to deal with the missing boat, the NHK public broadcaster reported. Uh, High waves and strong winds were observed in the area around noon, according to a local fisheries cooperative. Uh, Japanese media reporting that uh, fishing boats had returned to port before noon because of the bad weather. Yeah, and that that temperature water, you go in there, you're not going to live very long. No, yeah, that's a that's a. I mean, you're dangerous. you won't die immediately, but you will go into hyperthermia and fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Uh, two more stories here on Ripped from the Headlines on, uh, on this edition of True Crime Tuesday. An Air Force general has been convicted of sex assault on his sister-in-law. Oh. Yikes. Well, don't do that. No. <laughs> well, that's easy for you to say, Bruiser. Don't do that. I have a sister-in-law either. I have a brother. Well, I do have a sister-in-law, my brother-in-law's <laughs> wife. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, William Cooley's conviction in a, in a let me start that over. You, you shocked me with that <laughs> answer. Throw you off. Uh, well, I, see, I'd be, I'd be a horrible lawyer. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> what I did. Well, don't do that. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, William Cooley's conviction in a court martial is a historic one. At that, for the first time, an Air Force general has been convicted of sexual assault. Two-star General William Cooley was found guilty and a court-martial of forcibly kissing a woman in a verdict described as historic by outlets including National Public Radio and the Washington Post, and in a news release from the Air Force itself, the woman Cooley assaulted was his own sister-in-law, who allowed media outlets to describe her as such, but not to name her or provide other details that might identify her. Uh, Cooley was convicted of forcibly kissing her on the lips and tongue, with an intent to gratify his sexual desire. That's just creepy. Wait, he, kissed, 
He kissed her tongue? <laughs> like, hey, baby, stick out your tongue. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> That's and, just wrong. And he was acquitted of charges that he groped her and forced her to touch him over his clothes. Okay, that's just creepy. Um, hey, these people are into weird stuff, man. I like, guess. Uh, I, the there's got you're you're a general. You're married for one. Like, yeah, and you're two star. If you're not yeah. happy, if if you're not happy in that department with your wife, maybe discuss it with her. The uh, the assault took place after a family barbecue in the summer of 2018, says the Air Force. The woman told investigators that Cooley had been drinking and asked her for a ride home during which he told her that he fantasized about having sex with her. At one point, uh, she said he pressed her up against the driver's side window, forcibly kissed and groped her through her clothes, per the Air Force statement. Cooley, who was previously relieved of his command of the Air Force Research Laboratory, faces up to seven years in prison and dismissal from the military when he is sentenced on Monday. The price for peace in my extended family was my silence, and that was too high a price to pay, said the woman and a statement issued through her attorney. Doing the right thing, speaking up, telling the truth shouldn't be this hard, she said. Well, she's right about that. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, it, You'd be surprised at how hard it is for people, though. Yeah. Hopefully it won't be this difficult for the next survivor. Uh, Cooley issued no statement after the verdict. This is not only the first conviction of an Air Force general, it's the first time sexual assault charges have led to criminal prosecution for someone so high up in the chain of command, according to the Air Force Times. That blows my mind. You'd not saying that all our generals are groping everybody, but you'd think in history something would have come up. Well, unless our, our Air Force generals are well behaved, which congratulations, Air Force generals, thank you, keep it up. I don't you know. I don't know that that's the case. I think maybe it's just the first time they've been they got caught. They've been had their feet held to the fire. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, uh, you might have heard the story of murder suspect David Bonola who appeared to share YouTube videos on New York City crime and seduction tips. He also killed his ex-girlfriend, who was married at the time, and threatened her family with offing them as well. So his YouTube page was how to get away with stuff? Yeah. Oh, well, that's your first red flag. You would <laughs> think, but you have to keep in mind that he was... Uh, he was also the handyman for this family for so many years and then had only quit recently and come back. Yeah, that, that, that's another red flag. I mean, <laughs> Well, see, they, they had been having an affair for quite a long time, and then they broke it off. He left, but the husband had no idea. So the, hus so the husband still didn't know after she was murdered. Right. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That poor guy. Uh, the illegal immigrant charged with murdering married Queen's mom, Orsolia Gall, after their two-year-on-off affair, appeared to run a YouTube channel obsessed with Big Apple crime as well as tricks on how to seduce women. The channel under David Bonola, the name of the handyman who allegedly confessed Thursday to Gall's brutal stabbing, has shared thousands of videos on curated playlists, including 754 to local news reports of violent crimes. They included shootings, rapes, and murders, as well as high-profile stabbing similar to the one that 44-year-old Bonola allegedly committed in the early hours of April 16th after confronting 51-year-old Gull at her stately Forest Hills homes about the end of their affair. Shared clips include the brutal stabbing death of 18-year-old uh, Bernard College student Tessa Majors during a botched 2019 robbery in Harlem, as well as a fatal stabbing of a good Samaritan who was trying to break up a knife fight outside a Brooklyn gambling den. Uh, the channel also shared a news report about the death of Drew Carey's ex fiance sex therapist uh, Annie, Annie Harwick, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah, there's a really good, um, was that 48 hours on that? Yeah on her death and yep. they interview him and they interview everybody and it's it's really good i recommend anybody that's interested you see a whole new side of drew carey and you also see what what basically what what um stalking does to you yeah she was she was allegedly killed by a stalker ex uh, that she had sought to get protection against she um, even said too if, if anything happens to me this is the guy you want to look at that's creepy 
Uh, another playlist titled Interesting, meanwhile, starts with a video explaining how an AK-47 works. Oh. Yeah. Well, we shouldn't, that <laughs> shouldn't be on YouTube. Like, I don't want my kid to learn. I mean, my kids are old enough now, they know, but you don't want kids going just clicking on there and learning how an AK-47 works. Uh, hundreds of videos on the site showed a clear obsession with sex and dating, including scores from so-called pickup artists and others on how to win back no longer interested women. One playlist with 262 such videos start with a clip promising seven mindsets that attract women like crazy. By owning these mindsets, along with, of course, having pick up fundamentalist, you basically become unstoppable with women promises professional dating coach Matt Artisan of The Attractive Man. So if they reject you, you're supposed to stab them 55 times? No, 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 that's not the, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not the, I don't think that's the point. Uh, that other, this guy's mind went though, is like, oh, she says, no, I'm going to stab her. No, and put her right, in a I don't think he went right to that. Um, <laughs> other videos <laughs> on the, the last resort. <laughs> <laughs> Other videos on the playlist include three older guy attraction tricks that will attract all women, uh, how to be instantly irresistible and how to get a girlfriend, even if she's not interested in you at first. And no, Bruiser, it's not a, it's not a knife. Um, <laughs> other tricks promise to help men seduce women uh, when she says she's confused, as well as when she says she's not ready. Another advises how to sexually escalate with women, while one clip promises to teach men how to make a woman want you sexually. Wait, Married? To... Don't pick them up. <laughs> What's that? If they're married, don't pick them up. Oh, well, there's that one, yeah. I, I didn't get the end of what you said there. Uh, the channel even shares more graphic sex tips, including three ways to please a girl in bed, dirty moves to try. Boy, this guy really went down the rabbit hole, didn't he? And how yeah, to did. Oh, and how to go down on a woman. There's that one, too. Oh, see, he's just trying to please her. This guy had the playlist, didn't he? Uh, he as, did. As well as numerous tips on su seduction, the channel also focuses on how to cope with an affair gone bad, including dealing with narcissists. I think he pretty much fit the narcissist thing. Yeah, because I bet you any money the whole conversation was – why don't you leave your husband and go with me? And she's not going to leave her husband. So he got upset. If he, if I can't have you, nobody can have you type thing. Yep. Uh, breakups. That's why my advice works. If she's married, don't pursue her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, breakups. What I'm confused really means. One video is titled while another offers how to make her miss you for four tips when it's not going anywhere. Uh, how to get your ex to think about you constantly, another clip promises, while others advise on how to deal with being hosted by a love interest, as well as how to stop being needy and insecure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that one worked. Uh, another offers tips on how to break the loop of, of, of obsession. I, I think that one uh, failed as well. Uh, other curated playlists share music, including a rap one that, because of an unfortunate typo, is listed as rapers, not rappers. Oh. Yeah. Um, it goes on to say that Bonola was charged Thursday with murder, criminal tampering, and criminal possession of a weapon for allegedly stabbing Gull nearly 60 times while one of his or her sons was upstairs in their Forest Hills home. Yes, their son was home while this was happening. He had to have heard something. You don't oh. stab, so, stab somebody 55 times and there's no sound. Yeah, he definitely heard. Uh, after his arrest, uh, it emerged he had an apparent history of creeping out women in Queens with his unwanted come-ons. Officials to also told the Post that the Mexican national was here illegally, having entered the U.S. from Mexico about 21 years ago. So there you go. So what we can take from that is don't become obsessive. Don't pursue married women mm -hmm. and don't be creepy. And no means no. Yeah. Yeah. That's like just I'm, all there's I'm to it. By far not a ladies' man, but I've done all right because I'm not creepy. Yeah. Yeah. You you're, know, you're, I landed my wife, you know. You're big and cuddly, according to one listener. <laughs> I, I am big and cuddly. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what one of our listeners has, has said to me in an email, which if I ever gave you the copy of, you probably posted on your social media. 
Oh, it'd be I'm everywhere. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I'm sure. We're we're what a month away from you telling me that, and I'm still referencing it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I should give you the copy of that email. Oh, well, I'll print it out and frame it. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> Well, folks, it's about that time where if you are a free member, free subscriber to this program, we must bid you adieu. Uh, But you don't have to go quite yet, Bruiser. You don't have to go quite yet. Here's the deal. If you want to join us for Dumb Crime, Stupid Criminals in the second half of this program, it's real easy. You just go to Stitcher.com and you click on that subscribe button for Stitcher Premium. Or you just go to Stitcher.com slash darkness. That'll take you to the button that has Stitcher Premium as well. And uh, get yourself some Stitcher Premium. It's just $5 a month. And you can join us not only for uh, the Stitcher Premium version of True Crime Tuesday, which gets you Dumb Crime, Stupid Criminals. It also gets you the ad-free version of Darkness Radio. And it gets you hundreds of podcasts, commercial-free, out there in the Stitcher universe, which is wonderful. You get oh, yeah. you get your audio universe expanded like you wouldn't believe for just five dollars a month. How's that bruising? I love it. Five dollars for no commercials, I'm all for it. There you go. That's part of the reason I listen to podcasts and, and do the premium stuff on podcasts, because I don't have to deal with commercials. There you go. So with that, if you are uh, on the free side, it's time for us now to bid you adieu. And thank you for tuning in to True Crime Tuesday. <laughs>